Hey everyone, welcome back to A Drink With Crazy. Have you ever wondered why so many YouTube reviewers hide behind the word opinion and subjective? I did, well, I probably did. because they're too afraid of criticism. And the fact of the matter that, is, that's, is... That's obvious, yes. Objective and subjective are two totally different things. One is fact. That's just your is, opinion. That is just your opinion. Stop it. I hate you so much right now. Oh, God, I hate you so much right now. Hit that subscribe button down below. Don't forget to ring that notification bell. Comment if you guys like this. And let's get into our discussion. Objective versus subjective and why we would wish people would stop hiding behind opinion. It would be fan-freaking-tastic. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you ring that notification bell. And make sure to share this with everyone you know to help us beat that massive YouTube algorithm. All right. How many reviews have we watched where it's just like, well, this is just my opinion, guys? Uh, and but to be fair, I mean, that's not just a review thing. That's just an internet thing at this point. Yeah. Like, anytime somebody says anything, it's got to be, well, that's just my two cents. Or that's just my opinion. Or subjectively, I think. And it's just, well, no, that there are objective things. And the second you, especially when somebody likes something and you don't, mm -hmm. they go, well, that's just your opinion. And it, it, it's... It's getting really irritating because it's no, if I sit there and I say that this is a poorly paced story, or if I sit there and say that you were, you know, disrespectful to characters that have come before, I'm looking at very objective things here, right? Like I'm looking at the behavior of, oh, I don't know, Luke Skywalker between Return of the Jedi and The Last Jedi. Or, you know, how they did the dirty to Ellie in The Last of Us 2. Oh, yeah. No, it, it really felt like they wanted certain story moments and just didn't give a damn about their character. Well, and that's one of the things that I think is... It, <laughs> I've seen... I've been watching a lot of uh, reviews on just everything lately. And the people who come out and they're like, oh, well, this review was... Well, well this was good. It was, it was good. I like, it falls back to that whole, like, they tried thing. And I'm like, but but yeah, okay, we'll get on that okay. One. So if, yeah. if, if if subjectively you want to say it's good, that's fine. For instance, I will give, I'll give you a gimme. Objectively, Boondock Saints Two is not that good of a movie. Subjectively, I love the shit out of that movie. Yeah, that's like Jurassic World movies for me, right? Is that? And obviously, we talked about that in our Mary Sue yeah. discussion, where yeah, no, I oh and Grady, yeah, <laughs> but. At the same time, they're poorly paced. They make no sense. There's massive leaps of logic. There's absolutely no coherency in their actual plan, and yet dinosaurs so. Yeah. No. And being objective for those YouTube out th for the YouTubers out there that don't know, that means that you can look at something and go, look. Based on this criteria that is agreed upon, we can sit there and evaluate based, you know, this versus that. This either goes above, it meets, or it falls below. Mm -hmm. So in terms of a well-paced story, something that is very well agreed upon in most literature classes is that you have to sit there and you, you, know, you rate things against that. So if it doesn't fall in this pacing, you sit there and you go, okay, no, this is objectively poorly paced because based on this criteria... Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which is that, you know, a three-act structure or a six-act structure, whatever you're going for, certain, you know, rises and falls need to happen. And if you don't hit those, yeah, objectively, well, no, it's and poorly the, paced. And, and that's one of the things, too, is that, it, that there are so many things that fall under, you know, objectivity. <clears throat> and when you're looking at uh, movies, games, and all of that, there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, guys, here's the deal. This was wrong with the game. This was wrong with the movie. This, this is wrong not with just the TV my show. This, yeah, exactly. This was wrong yeah. with the TV show. This is not just my opinion. If you look back at classics and like what, where we kind of established the bar to be, Tolkien, uh, th th further, th you know, yeah. Tolkien, Star Wars, the OG Star Wars, not OG Star, Star Wars. Wars. Well, I mean, that's new Star Wars. You know, that's Hero's but, Journey. That's been around since Gilgamesh. Yeah, I know. I mean, we, I mean, since we, a Journey you know, to the West, I mean, Journey to the West was a oh, different yeah, version yeah, of yeah. Hero's Journey. But, but I mean, we're we're going all the way back. Like some of these things are just established things that we can go look. We've seen throughout human history, stories have been told a certain way. Now, that does not mean you can not still not like something. Like I said, I can come out and I can rail against some of my favorite things ever. I oh, absolutely yeah. Oh, yeah. can rail. For instance, The Expendables. Some of my... Wow. The, shut up. 
some of my favorite movies ever. One and two, three sucked. Uh, three objectively and subjectively sucked. Uh, but one and two, I actually didn't. Well, two got a little. Anyway, but objectively, they're I, I not. Picked, I would have picked something a little stronger than Expendables. They're not body, but... good movies. Objectively, they're not good. Well, I, I mean, know <laughs> they're not. But subjectively, I love them because guess well, what? No, subjectively, the... that's my opinion. Objectively, there's some crap they could have done better. All right, let's go with a movie that I think everybody un- universally just agrees with. It's just well paced. It's well told. It's got good action in it. Die Hard, the first Die Hard, the original Die I was Hard. Go with Dark Knight, but sure, we'll go with yours. Why are you just yeah, anyway? But no, but the first Die Hard movie. <laughs> I'm sorry, the first Die Hard movie. Can we find problems with it? Yes. But the fact of the matter is, it's a simple story. It's well told. It's well put together. It's well no, edited. Good, and editing, editing is where a lot of things like fall apart. Yeah. For instance, like the thing that really gets me, and I, I love the Star Wars prequels. I love them. The thing that gets me with the, uh, especially Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones is the editing. The editing Attack is where... Attack of the Clones, where, for sure. Yeah. The Attack of the Clones, for sure. For sure. For but, sure. Yeah. But yeah. the editing. But again... There are things that we can look at, especially with Die Hard. Objectively, it's a good movie. It's well paced. It's well edited. It's well acted. It's for well what it narrated, is too. for this... what it for what it is exactly except for its framing that it's using. It's well done. Um, for example, if you want to be objective about something, you can't compare uh, Die Hard to Saving Private Ryan to The Dark Knight to no. Uh, um, no, what you can compare Citizen that to King, is say, yeah, did, Godfather. Did, did these, did, okay, what story elements were they going for? Have they been told before? Okay, yes, they've been told before. Okay, in what narratives have they been told before where they're good? And what narratives have they been told before where they're bad? And That's then you go, okay, us a lens. And, and that gives you a lens. That gives mm-hmm. you the lens to look through. So objectively, you can look at certain things and go, this is bad. Let's cover The Dark Knight, one of yes. our favorite movies. Um, objectively, I'd say that this movie is very well paced. Obviously, you have a fantastic antagonist. You understand mm-hmm. his motivations. Even if those motivations aren't un- very relatable, because, I mean, who, c- who can really relate to Heath Ledger- Ledger's Joker? He, as I, he well, says, he's and, a dog chasing cars. And here's the thing. But is you I, know what, you well, understand no, here's, what you he's know, doing. You know, here's, here's how you can relate to it. Right. And, and here's, how, here's why people relate to the Joker. Is it's that voice in your head that tells you to do something, like, really bad. But we also have that conscience that's like, no, you can't do that because you're not supposed to. Anyway. And we usually go, okay, let's go with you, conscience. But the Joker is that voice in the back of our head that just says, just do it. Just go for it. Just do it. The devil on your shoulder, yeah. And usually you end up in jail for things like that. Unless you're the Joker who's just that level of intelligent. But um, Uh, but no. But but no, it's very well paced. It's got a good antagonist. Obviously, Christian Bale as... Visuals are great. Bruce Wayne, Batman... You know, I love that opening shot where the the, mm-hmm. the masked you know criminals are going into the bank, and you don't you don't really know what's going on, and then the Joker reveal, right? And no, which and that was a reveal that was not his introduction, but that's for another that's for another. It's talk. not his introduction; it is his reveal. Yes, yes, but no, and so objectively, I can point to other crime noir and yeah, superhero. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, it, it's a crime noir story with a superhero setting. So based on these criteria. Mm-hmm. You know, I can sit there and I can rate, okay, is the, you know, superhero within character of that superhero, i.e. in this case, Batman? Mm -hmm. Yes. Is the Joker in character? Yes. Is, you know, okay, so the characters are established. Is uh, Lucius Fox the same character he was in Batman Begins? Yes. Okay, cool. Now, setting, it's still Gotham. Okay, check. You know, so we've got superhero. Now, crime noir, the mysterious villain, the, you know. Well, and, and so let's, you know, let's cover, you know, Last of Us 2. Right, because because I've seen some people come out and defend it, and one of the things that I That's, see yes. that it's is in defense of the Last of Us two, is that people are like they they often reference all what the what the studio was trying to go for. Which one I I hate that we will do a video on that. Yes, I'm not going to go in deep into that now, but the fact of the matter is one of the best uh, reviews that I heard in uh, to give it positively was that. Um, if the last of us is a Western, right, that, that old gunslinger that has one final, you know, mission he's got to go on, then the last yeah. of us two is a Western with a revenge tale. And the fact of the matter is, is I've seen the revenge tale told so much many better times and yes. so many times and so much better in so many other IPs and also, okay, well, oh, well, tombstone. and now, now let's Just say for an easy one. Yeah. Tombs. Oh, tombstones. The last half of there. tombstone. So is, it's, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. The revenge tale in tombstone, which, uh, 96, 93. Yes. Uh, 96. 
It I is believe. 96. Okay. I believe 96. Which yeah. is one of our... Mm, doggo be doggo and doggo be fucking up with my cameras. Oh, there goes the language barrier. Anyway. Damn it, doggos. Um, but no. But if you're really going to look... It, actually. But, right. Yeah, I think she fixed it for us. Um, but no. But if you're really going to look at uh, a Revenge Tale of The Last of Us 2... It's not well told, and no, and, it is, not. and part of it, it the, the the pacing, the character motivations, the character resolutions, the actual story resolutions, the plot resolutions. There are things that are just no. not so objectively. The Last of Us right. Two did not meet the story beats, did not meet the character beats, did not meet the certain things that well, it needed I, to I'll... in order to be good. That does not mean that subjectively you can't like it. Objectively, The Last of Us Two is a bad game. Now, Indeed, and I so, also do not like that game. I think it was it drawn on for uh, it went for way too long. It 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 had a lot of things wrong with it. But again, I don't understand why people are so insistent on hiding behind the word. Well, this is just my opinion. This is just, and because, I, because it's the this almost freedom from actually having to think critically. I think. Is is that if everything is just my opinion and it's you know untouchable, right? Mm-hmm. Then no, nothing anybody says has to be relevant to you anymore. It's just my opinion. It's untouchable. I don't have to think any deeper about this. It is literally mm-hmm. the mental equivalent of a get out of jail free card. Yes, I think that um, I, I I would really love to start seeing reviews of even uh, of things that people are just like, you know what? I loved it. I don't give a damn. Here's what's wrong with it. There's a lot wrong with it. There's because because there because there, there's a lot wrong with it. But I want people to be able to admit there's stuff that's wrong with this. But I don't care because I had a good time with it. Well, again, because Jura- Jurassic World: Fallen Kingdom for me, an objectively very bad movie. <laughs> uh, just it is not a good movie. Yeah, but. I, I love it. I do because it's got the dinosaurs. It's got the member berries that in just the right places. Yeah. Like uh, the the scene where they're leaving uh, uh, Isla Nublar, the setting for uh, Jurassic Park and uh, Jurassic World, and you know they're they're sailing away on the boat. Go. And the volcano is erupting, and mm. this brachiosaur. It's the original brachiosaur that we first saw in Jurassic Park. And it comes up, and there's this wall of fire coming towards it as the boat sails away, and it does that classic brachiosaur cry, and it rears up that last time just as a callback to that first movie. And it hit me right in the feels. So why, Matt's why, a cheap why, date. Anybody want to take Matt on a date? He's a what, cheap date. <laughs> it well, don't take But now, if I'm going to look at this scene objectively, is, okay, brachiosaurs are one of the most iconic dinosaurs out there, so why didn't they take that with them? Second, why didn't they get a bigger boat? No Jaws reference there. But third... Why is that wall of fire already there when our characters were clearly very much in the clear? Finally, well, uh, why is that brachiosaur even there? Does it understand how boats work? Like, I, I why, why is it even there? No, it's set up for exactly what I talked about. Yeah. And I, I think that so many people on YouTube that I've seen. Great scene for me. Terrible construction in a movie. No, and yeah. that's and that's the problem is that a lot of people want to sit here and say, oh, well, it's just my opinion and this is why it's good. And they hide behind opinion. And I'm tired of it. And here's the fact of the matter is, there are, is, is we're using, we're, you, we're really using this video to say, here's the deal. There are things we are going to be wrong about. There are things we are absolutely going to be wrong about. And oftentimes when we're talking, we don't go, we don't have to delineate between fact and opinion. We don't feel like we have to because we feel like anybody who's checking us out and watching our channel is smart enough to understand, okay, well, these guys are kind of talking about opinion here. But here's the thing is if you guys go, look, you're wrong there, it'd be like, well, yeah, no, we're wrong there. Flat out. We're wrong. We're wrong. Thank you. Just so we're clear on kind of where we're coming from on this is that if I'm going to go back to like um, The Last of Us Part 2. It is a asynchronous, confusing, poorly placed, overly long narrative that has poor character motivation and identity and has a very hard time actually getting its message across due to it's just above issues. But subjectively, I don't like the game. But you subjectively might. You can sit there same way with me at Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. You can look at these flaws and say, you know what? I still enjoyed it. I liked the voice acting. I liked the gameplay. I liked the environments. I even liked, you know, the characterizations such as they were to the point where my enjoyment was greater than those negatives. And that's fine as long as you recognize that when people bring up those negatives, that is an objective criticism. That is not a subjective. Subjective is, well, this is bad. Objective yeah. is based on Western storytelling. The plot, the plot is all over the place. It's poorly paced. The characters don't identify 
with their motivations very well. And all these things are very easy. If they submitted that to my lit teacher, they would have gotten a C. Yeah. And no. so, but you can still enjoy it. And I mean, I love finding enjoyment out of objectively bad movies. I do it all the time. I mean, horror is a genre full of them. Mm-hmm. But you sit there, you have a little bit to drink, yeah. and you laugh along with it because they are so predictable. He knows me. I will actually sit there and roll down the jump scares before they even happen on a movie I haven't seen. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, like I said, I, the, the whole thing that I look at Roll this, down means volume. Yeah, yeah. I know. He but, knows. They don't. No, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, like I said, the, the whole thing that kind of brought this up is that we were tired of seeing YouTube channels out there. With the exception of one, there's one that both he and I very much enjoy. Um that uh, really, really dives into uh, you know objective versus subjective. Yes, and again, yes, and and there's a massive difference there. Is we actually have a scale. We have a scale where we can go. This was this good. This was this good. Where does this fall? You know, we have a scale. We know storytelling at this point. We've been around a while. We've been telling stories for a while. Yes, we know what we know what we're doing. And the problem that I have with so many channels is that they do come out and they're like, well, guys, this is just my opinion. And they're even... Chan- and here's the thing. I'll give you a subjective opinion right now. There are channels that I watch that use that, that they go, hey, guys, this is just my opinion. Let me know what you think. And I'm like, I still love these channels. But me- but you have to be, uh, to be objective. It is a catch-all in a, you know, act of defense. It's a self-defense mechanism at this point because... They're worried about the you know backlash from people who either like or dislike whatever they're talking about, right? Mm-hmm. So by saying, that's just my opinion, they're trying to deflect. It's a deflection mechanism, right? It's, yeah. it's saying, you know, it's the shield. It's the bulwark. Saying, yeah. you know, I, I can't be touched because this is just my opinion. And what's, it, what's the old saying? Uh, everybody, opinions are like uh, bum holes and everybody yeah. has one and some of them stink. Yeah. 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 Um, well, no, and that's the thing is like, yes, you may say this is just your opinion, but the fact of the matter is you might be wrong. Your opinion might be wrong. Have you ever been in the real world at a job or at a, I don't know, anywhere, a job, a church, a family function, whatever, and your opinion about something is just wrong? Because guess what? Opinions can be wrong. Absolutely. And that's why I am so... The defense is, it, it's invalid. It, it's, you know, like making a shield out of Swiss cheese. It's soft and it has, it's full of holes. Yeah. Um, and it's like, no. And if that is your opinion, that's fine. The fact of the matter is, if, you're, if your opinion is in disregard of the facts, right? For instance, we've named a couple movies here yep. where our opinions of these movies are just in... in yes, in I spite, know the it, facts. I, I just... I mm-hmm. don't care. I am disregarding the facts because I had fun with it and I don't care and I love it. Oh, you know what? I can't fight you there. That's your opinion. But, but if, your if opinion, we're talking film critique, then I can't go into a room full of uh, producers, directors, screenwriters and try and defend... Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom as good writing. Or The Last Jedi. No. Or The Rise of Skywalker. Well, that's also in direct or result of The Last Jedi. The so. Last of Us 2. No, because if you or go in... Or, like, the last season of Arrow. Or the last season of Game of Thrones. I hated the last season of Arrow. I have yet to actually watch it. I've just But seen. no, but there's just so much that you... That people don't seem to understand is opinion doesn't matter unless it's Hold your it. opinion and it matters to you to other people opinion may not matter but we have to come together and agree that there are criteria that lead to objective based and then subjectively your opinion can come in and be like hey look i know th- for example i know you like uh cheesy action movies oh i love me some cheesy action movies. you love cheesy action movies love so cheesy- expendables an- is right up your alley oh dude but i'm not going to recommend some of my cheesy horror movies because s- you don't care for them both are subjectively bad yes. or objectively bad i apologize yeah both are objectively but, bad yes but subjectively i will enjoy the horror a lot more than he will the mm. action based on our personal preference mm. but it's this understanding that your opinion does not create this shield wall between criticism and whatever you like. It is the defense of, 
You can like what you like, but you have to recognize flaws in what you're seeing. Well, it's like, for instance... If you're going to have a critical discussion, if you don't care uh, to, uh, then whatever. No, well, and I I think that that's what it is, is they don't want to have a critical discussion. Is they want to say that basically... The problem is when critics become the ones who don't want the critical discussion. Well, and that's the problem is that we, we see too much of that. We see way too much... Of the critics saying, "Well, it's just my opinion." You no, know you're, a no, no you're a professional reviewer who's being paid to write this. Please use the criteria. Please list the objective for uh, pros and cons, mm-hmm. and then at the end, at the very end, when you're wrapping up your thoughts, if you want to give your subjective opinion about how you felt about the game, that might be yeah. helpful. If I care about it, yeah. But objectively, you need to look at: is it glitchy? Is it paced well? Is it told well? Are the you know. You know, in terms of movies, uh, everything but the glitches, um, you've got to look at it, sub- you know, objectively, and then give me your subjective opinion. And most people don't want to do that. No, because it's most actually work. Most people don't care. No, no, and most YouTubers don't. M- most YouTubers don't care. Most YouTubers just want to throw out some clickbaity title that says, "I am," which I mean, that's exactly what we're doing. This is a clickbaity title, but that's exactly what we're doing. But most YouTubers want to hide behind. Well, this is just my opinion. Well, it's but, not just YouTubers, but, dude. Well, yeah, it's, that's it's true. It's about seventy percent of the internet. And I, along, I along with some YouTube. mainstream, all I watch, along is with YouTube. some mainstream, oh, critics, I literally like, live my life on YouTube. I actually just read an entire thing from Polygon about how, in my opinion, The Last of Us Two is good. And it's this big waffling thing about something. I'm not quite sure what their Polygon, point was. can you just get your shit together? I'm not quite sure what their point was. Oh. They, t- they talked a lot about the exhaustion of The Last of Us Part Two, but they didn't really. It was all very um, pompous. Subjective. That too. It was all very subjective. Yes. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for checking out This is Drink with Crazy. Hopefully you guys like the conversations that we're having here. Don't forget to go down below, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, ring that notification bell, and comment down below and tell us how we are objectively bad, but in your subjective opinion, you love the channel. Or maybe we're objectively good and subjectively you think we're bad. I like that one better. (laughs) Or He's subjectively, also. you think we're good, too. Yeah, either way. He's a masochist, but thank you guys so much. And until next time, cheers. Cheers, everybody. Thank you for watching A Drink With Crazy. If you liked the conversation, make sure to click here to see more.